Here on The Ride Note, we concern ourselves primarily with only the newest of new music, but sometimes, and only sometimes, it's good to go back, way back, to the first albums we ever bought. So you were seven when you bought your first record. Well, like I say I bought, I would imagine maybe yeah. someone someone assisted me, maybe maybe gave me the money, mm -hmm. maybe maybe mm. I earned it in some way, tidied yeah. my bedroom. Yeah. Just earned with, that money. I, I was I was eight, and I and also it wasn't the first record that I bought with my own money. That right. was a few years later. Mm. It was actually Michael Hutchins' album. It was actually the first Max Q album. Was the one I first bought mm. with my own money. It doesn't. Not his first album. Don't be impressed. <laughs> that's, that's, Back no, to number that wasn't one. The one. No, that was Back that was the first one I bought with my own money. But what it was, and uh, I I didn't bring a record like Sarah, several people here on the bench have. Yeah, but I draw, I've drawn mine. <laughs> Yeah. Brilliant. Do you do you know what that is? Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> Definitely Beauty and the Beast. Uh no. Oh. <laughs> Can you give us a hint? No That's idea. idea. Like Ebony Library well, or something. This one. This this is the singer and the and the main oh, person. Oh, no, go west. No, no, no. no. This is the plan. And, and out of here is a lot of a lot of noise. What country this, are these people this, from? This like down here is his his larynx, and out of this comes all the. Singing because he that's normal, I think, for yeah. most people. Well, right? especially <laughs> for him because he specifically is the voice. Johnny uh, Farnham. Yeah. Yeah. This is Whispering Jack by John Farnham. <laughs> came out of course. <laughs> yeah, very clearly. Excuse me, I'm gonna hold this up here. All right, all right, camera editor guy, can you please put a, a, a whispering jack? Identical, see? See? Yeah, wow, that is so. that's pretty amazing. Um, <laughs> hidden talents. It yeah. came out in 1986, and I remember being well, I didn't know anything about music. I, I think I'd listened Clearly. to Yeah. <laughs> I listened to a Dire Straits album at about the same time. And that's when I discovered what a middle section was because it was a bit without singing. Sorry, I love Mark Knopfler, but go on. Yeah, you know, he's he's great, Genius. but he's not this guy. No. And I, I remember watching the Whispering Jack concert with my mum and it was kind of like so with a with a uh, uh, like you know for your birthday you get like a gift voucher. So I bought the the cassette of Whispering Jack um, at Anthem Records in Engadine. Um, and then watching the, the live concert, which happened at about the same time, because he right. blew up. This was like, yeah. and then finding out, because there was a doco about him, how he almost gave up music, wow. all of this stuff. Like, and Didn't Glenn Wheatley mortgage his house for this record yeah, or something? Yeah, he did. Or? And, there, and there's so many amazing things that go with his album, apart from the fact that it was make or break for, for Johnny, for John, by that stage, John, mm. and also for Glenn Wheatley. Mm. He'd been kicked out of LRB for being too much of a front person. So, uh, you know, this is like his... He, and he had tried other things, had, hadn't been successful. This album has so many hits from, you know, Take the Pressure Down, which was a one-shot video clip, I think, done at the time, like just him just dancing around and singing with his silly haircut, to You're the Voice, to uh, Give Me a Reason, to Touch of Paradise. Touch of Paradise. That's like Ross Wilson from Daddy Cool and Mondo Rock co-wrote, well, pretty much wrote Touch of Paradise, I think. When you do look at this, a lot of... That I think John Farnham only wrote one song, which was Let Me Out, which is not a good song. <laughs> Filler. Yeah. I have a good story well, about he's, that. He's the voice. He's not, the, yeah. he's, not the writer. He's the voice. True. You'll find people, yeah, like Harry Bognavoz, I think, was the main writer <laughs> of a lot of those songs. And the voice was written by like five people. And I think only one of them was Australian. There's like mm. a member of Manfred Mann's Earth Band and all these other things. That's what it takes to write a good hit. Five it people. Does, it does, yeah. yeah. But, That's why people hassle Beyonce. He did the same thing, and his name's not even on the bloody song. When I was moving to Australia, all those many years ago, mm. I remember a person, a friend of mine gave me sage advice. He had also lived here for a period, and he said, look, there's just one thing I have to tell you. You will hear You're the Voice a lot. <laughs> Everywhere you go, you will hear that song. And I was like, ha, 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 got off the plane. In the airport when I landed, <laughs> I think I like was walking past the McDonald's. It was playing, and I kid you not, and I thought, holy shit. Well, you, you understand <laughs> that is why. true. Uh, have you managed to understand it yet? <laughs> well, we're all someone's daughter. We're uh, all someone's son. It's true. Aww. So take a look at each other. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> Can we just play a clip from that song for a moment? No, can we just, just play the whole... It? I mean, the, the, there's some interesting facts about the song. It was on a tape, a demo tape that John Farnham got given, which also had on it, was sent over from England, this demo tape, or brought over by a, a producer. Also had We Built This City, which oh, was eventually great. covered yeah, by Starship. Starship. Oh, thank he, God he, said, he didn't do that. Absolutely. And on the demo, the snare drum, because John Farnham, for this album, was really into sampling, believe it or not. 
He was sampling Ahead things. Of his time, that yeah, guy. He was. This he was this. DJing like a man. He was. It was. It was girl talk. <laughs> but he, uh, yeah. So he was sampling things using some sort of you know very primitive 1986 or 85 sampler. Sort of like the Grandmaster Flash of. Very much. Was, very much Grandmaster yeah, Flash. Yeah. But he he sampled in his garage at his dodgy house a car door which he used as the sam as the as the <laughs> snare sound he, as the snare sound in the no, demo of You're the Voice. He did. What do you reckon he recorded it on? On his, on a dodgy microphone. Or was it one of those like tape players where you yeah. press play and record at the same time? <laughs> it yeah. was, and then he put it in a sampler, <laughs> and then for the final copy when they decide when been an when accident. he and Glenn Wheatley convinced the record label to actually record your the voice which took a while to record it properly he said well we're going to do this properly and they hired a Porsche and they used this the car door of a Porsche slamming nice. as the snare sound of your the voice because record companies had too much money they <laughs> back in 1986 Holy shit. I, I don't I think there wasn't a record company when they recorded this album I think they had to sell it to a record company afterwards they even went to a radio station to try and get any traction at so, all. Hang on, who paid for the Porsche? Oh, it's, I don't know. He just cut off some of his mullet and just gave this, <laughs> sold that to someone. No, I, I don't know the facts if you're watching John I or Glenn. I think he just hung around outside a cafe in Turek <laughs> and, and, and waited until someone was leaving and got them as they shut the got door. Got them as they shut the door. That could have been it. <laughs> Hopefully they didn't like get their expensive alligator skin shoe caught in the door at the time. Anyway. Does this explain your punk rock? Uh, your, your no, it's, it's not a reaction to this at all. Although w the thing about Frenzel Roman stuff is, that, is our amazing grasp of melody, which no one has ever said about <laughs> us. But we do love melody a lot. And I think this sort of stuff and also our love of, you know, yacht rock like Toto and Steely Dan and stuff plays into that, although you will not be able to hear it in any Frenzel Roman <laughs> albums, including is there, is one, the one that's coming out, out on the 26th of May. It's, it's called High Vis High Tea. <laughs>